everyone welcome back to the next video of the fellowship series which is very interesting and also very important was that it's tbt research associate fellowship so if you want to get this fellowship for your higher studies and if you want to pursue research then this video is for you where i'm going to take you into the details of dbt research associate fellowship so let's begin So firstly coming to the introduction of DBT RA fellowship. So this fellowship is awarded to the applicant who is interested to pursue research even in the areas of biotechnology or life science. So if you have any interest to pursue research or to carry out further studies in the area of biotechnology or life science then this fellowship is for you. This is sponsored by the DBT Research Associateship program and once you get this fellowship then this will be enabled at premier research institutes or university that includes non profit r&d institutions within india now the next question is who can apply for this dbt ra fellowship and what's the eligibility criteria so the point number 1 the applicant should hold a phd degree in the field of science and engineering that means you should have completed your phd even in the field of science or engineering or you should have doctorate of medicine or master of science degree in any area of medicine but make sure you should have research interest in the field of biotechnology or life science and then you can go for this fellowship make sure you should have a good academic record to apply for this fellowship the next point the applicant who have already submitted the phd thesis are also eligible to apply means if you have submitted your phd degree and you have still not awarded with your degree then still you can go for this fellowship and you can apply for it the upper age limit for male candidates it's only 40 year but for women candidates they have got 5 years of relaxation and the upper age limit is 45 years in case of women candidates but as on the last date of application so who should apply for this fellowship the applicant should be an indian citizen non resident of india as well as overseas citizen of india that is oci card holders and make sure while you are filling for your application form so once you have completed your phd and suppose if you are employed in any kind of organization or institute but at the time of application you have to provide no objection certificate that you have to take it from your company where you are working so the applicant already employed are also eligible to apply so if you are working somewhere still you can apply for this fellowship however they are required to upload a noc from the employer during the online submission of the application so that's all about the eligibility criteria for this fellowship now what's the total number of fellowship that is given for this dbt ra so the total of 75 fellowship is awarded every year but that is revised depending on the utility of the program so if they want to increase the fellowship then the fellowship number will be increased from 75 to some 80 or 85 and if they want to decrease it there is no funding and something constraint is there so they will decrease this fellowship from 75 to 65 or 70 what's the tenure of fellowship so this fellowship is given on a temporary assignment so this is a temporary basis fellowship so the associate ship is purely temporary assignment but is it is tenable only for a period of 2 years but if you want the extension of it and if you are really doing some good research then it may be extended up to 4 years and that too in a exceptional case it is not given for every applicant so it depends upon the progress of the research works means if you have done very good research that it may be uh, extended up to 4 years but your research work will be reviewed what all things you have done for 2 years so the next is nature of fellowship and what's the fellowship or you can say the stipend that is given to the dbt ra applicant so the each fellow would be is entitled to a stipend of a range 47000 to 54000 per month means you will be given a stipend of 47000 or 54000 per month so this is the range they have given in their uh, portal and the research contingency grant of rupees 50000 per year will be payable not to the applicant but to the host institution make sure you will also get contingency grant or you can say funding from the dbt associateship program 
to the applicant. So this will be given in the name of the applicant to the institution, not to an applicant. So the candidates who are yet to be awarded the PhD degree, but submitted the thesis, the emoluments will be 35,000 per month. And suppose if you are just submitted your PhD degree and still you are not awarded with a degree. So what will happen? You will only get the emoluments of rupees 35,000 per month. And if you see this emoluments is similar to senior research fellow that is SRF uh, payable. That means you will be called as senior research fellow this time. And once you are awarded with your PhD degree, now you will be called as DBTRA and your fellowship will be revised from 35,000 per month to 47,000 to 54,000 per month. But now for this time, you will only be called as senior research fellow. And also you will be getting HRA along with your basic salary. The fellows will be also be entitled to HRA that is 8% to 24% depending on the city. So it totally depends on the metro city or non-metro city where you are enrolled for your DBT RA fellowship. And you will be given as uh, this HRA you can say for 8%, 16% or 24% as per the GOI guidelines that is applicable to the research fellowship or associate ships. So now let's see the general guidelines that are associated with DBT RA program. So they have their certain guidelines. So let's see about that. So this fellowship, it can be availed only once by a candidate in his or her career. Suppose if you are getting this DBT RA fellowship this time, so you cannot apply for the next time because it can only be availed once in, in your career. The fellowship is tenable in India in any of the organized uh, academic institutions, national laboratories as well as R&D institutions. So if you are getting this fellowship, you can use it for R&D institutions, national laboratories as well as academic institutions across India. And the host institution must provide you with the administrative as well as infrastructural support. The fellowship cannot be availed at the same institution where the candidates have earned their PhD, MD or MS degree. Suppose let's say if you have completed your PhD and if you have got your PhD degree from National Institute of Immunology that is in New Delhi. So you cannot avail the same DBT RA fellowship from NII. For this you have to take this fellowship and you have to enroll in some other institution for this DBT RA work. So you cannot avail this fellowship in the same institution where you have pursued and you have awarded a PhD degree. Also under whom you are applying or you can say under whom you are registering a mentor, that mentor should not have more than two DBT RA fellows at a time. So at once he or she should not have more than two DBT RA fellows and also he or she should hold a regular academic research position in a recognized institution in India and mentor should hold either PhD degree or MD degree or MS degree either in sciences, engineering or medicine. And if we talk about superannuated faculties such as honorary professor, M writers scientist, M writers professors who are expert, DBT distinguished professor. If they are taking you as a DBT RA candidate, so at that time they should demonstrate that the resources and funding is available to them and also they have a specific lab for you. So if they are not having any lab and if they don't demonstrate any lab or funding, so they are not supposed to take you as a DBT RA candidates under them. And if you are a permanent resident of Northeast region, that is NER, then you have a special provision that you can work in any of the university or institution in India. So this is all about the guidelines of DBT RA program. Now let's see the mode of collection. So firstly, the advertisement is made in the national English newspaper that is from the Northeast. And this advertisement is made twice in a year. That is in the month of Fab as well as in the month of August that is made twice every year. And the screening of applicant is done so as to shortlist the applicant for interviews and presentation. Means once you have applied, now they will be shortlisting the candidates out of the total applicants. Now you will be called for your interviews and presentation where you have to present your PhD work. And on the basis of this interview and presentation only, you will be awarded this fellowship. So shortlisted candidates are called for interview and presentation in the selection committee. So selection committee will be calling you for the interview. That is happening in the month of May if you are applying in the month of Fab 
or you will be called for an interview in the month of November if you have applied in the winter se session that is in the month of August. Make sure the interviews for these are held at IISC Bangalore. So you have to go to IISC Bangalore and there only you have to appear for your interview as well as you have to present your PhD work. And once the selected candidates list is out, then they will be sent an offer letter in the month of May and November. The same time you can see when you are appearing for your interview in the month of May and November. And once you have received that offer letter, it's the time of joining to that institute. That will be from July 1st as well as January 1st. And once you are joining the institute, you have to send the joining reports that is sent from the candidate sign who joined the program. So this is all about the mode of selection that is happening twice in a year. And the advertisement is released in a newspaper that is from the Northeast side. Now, what are the documents that are required during the application? So the first major document is the date of birth certificate. Means you have to scan your date of birth certificate. You have to take a copy of it. You have to self attest it. And again, you have to convert it in a PDF form. So you have to upload the self attested PDF copy of DOB certificate and also PDF copies of all degree certificate, right? Starting from BSc, uh, MSc, all your semester mark sheets, as well as your PhD degree. A consent letter should be taken from the mentor and this consent letter ka format this is available in the DBT RA portal so you have to just visit that portal and you have to download the consent letter from there. After their mentor will fill this consent letter for you and the last is NOC from the employer and that is optional. If you are working somewhere after your PhD and if you are employed then you have to submit a NOC that is no objection certificate from the company. Now, how to apply for this DBT RA fellowship? Firstly, the application is made online. That means you have to visit the DBT RA portal and the link is provided here. That is ra.dbtindia.gov.in. So while filling for this uh, application form, you have to first register. Then you have to fill in the complete info in the online application form and then submit it before the closing date of an application. So you have to just check it when is the last date. So you have to apply beforehand itself. Now there are some information or you can say some details regarding to application. So while you are applying for this DPT RA fellowship. Now what are the important points you should keep in your mind? Firstly, while filling the application form, you should be asked about the name and contact details of the referees. So the first point, name and contact details of the referees are to be provided by the applicant. So if you are filling this form, so you have to provide the names and contact details of the referee. Contact details here refers to the contact number as well as the email ID of the referee while filling out the application form. During submission of the online application form, an email link will be generated. And this email along with the link, you have to send to all your referees for the letter of recommendation. So an email with the link to submit a letter of recommendation shall be sent by the applicant to the email address of the referees who have been mentioned in the application form. So all referees who you have mentioned in the application form, you have to send that email along with the link so that they can uh, upload that uh, letter of recommendation for you. The referee must upload a PDF copy of the recommendation on the portal before the last day of an application and you have to assure whether they have done it before the last day or not. So the applicant shall assure that the referee provides the recommendation letter on time and the application that you have not submitted through the DBTRA portal that shall not be accepted. So make sure you have filled the form, you have registered for it, you have uploaded the, uh, all your documents and the letter of recommendation is also uploaded from the referee side and it is finally submitted. So this was all about the DBT Research Associateship program where we have seen that tenure of fellowship was the nature of fellowship and what are certain guidelines that are associated specifically with DBT Agra program. So thank you everyone for watching this session. If you like the session, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel that is Biotechnica. Meet you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Have a nice day.